Are you intimidated by using sprays, but you love the look of them? I'm going to share a technique that may help you. Let's get into it. I'm starting off with some watercolor paper and I'm going to spritz it with just a little bit of water. This is going to help the color move around on the paper. Now we are going to be spraying the sprays, but instead of spraying directly onto the paper, we're going to spray onto a glass mat or any other non-porous surface will work as well. Once we have all the color down on the mat, we're going to flip over that paper that we sprayed with water and smushing the side that we sprayed with water into the color on the mat. To get the desired look, you may need to smush the paper into the color a few different times. But for this background, I wanted more of the salvaged patina color. So I actually sprayed the color directly onto the paper. And because it's a lighter color, it's not as intimidating as say the Uncharted Mariner or Villainous Potion or any other darker color you might use. Once you have the look that you want, you can go in and splatter some of the color onto the background. This is going to add a lot of interest. Now we're not going to waste any of that excess color that's on the mat. So you can take some tags or other cardstock and smush it straight into the color. You're going to get a lighter look, but it is definitely a start to a really good background. I dried the background, not completely dry. There is a couple areas that are still wet, but now we're going to splatter some of that color onto the background again. I'm doing this when the background is fairly dry because it's going to add more saturation of color to the background and this is what I want. Adding more color is totally up to you. I'm going to spritz the background with a little bit of water to help that color move around. Once I like where all the color is, I'm going to start drying. And at this moment, I did decide that I wanted a little bit more salvaged patina. So I'm just going to spray it on the background. And then once the background is completely dry, I'm going to start adding the water splatters. And this is going to give a lot of interest and depth to the background. I'm going to pick up any excess water with a paper towel and I'm going to keep the background wet so I can run it through my die cut machine with a 3D embossing folder. If your background is dry, you can spritz it with a little bit of water. This is going to help give a good impression. I think my paper was a little bit too wet, that's why it ripped, but for this next step, it doesn't really matter much. I am going to be adding some Distress Microglaze and this step is very important. I take a dome blending tool and lightly rub the microglaze over top of the background. This is going to help seal the background and bring out all of the depth in the colors. I like to call microglaze magic in a bottle. All right, this is why adding the microglaze is so important because we're going to be adding pigment ink right on top. Having the glaze on top of the background helps seal the sprays so that it doesn't seep into the ink. I'm lightly rubbing the ink onto the background so that I can get the raised areas. The ink is going to take a little bit to dry because you're adding it on top of glaze. I'm sure it's no surprise that I'm going to be adding some splatters with the Dina Wakely Gloss Spray in white. I think it adds so much interest and it just brings the whole card together. Now for the focal point, I'm going to be using a Sizzix die from Tim Holtz and I'm going to finish it off with a quick sticker sentiment. The techniques in this video are just the beginning. So if you want to learn even more mixed media techniques, be sure to check out the short playlist right here where I share more tips to help you create with confidence. I'll see you there.